Ben Shapiro, who once floated the idea of, uh, you know, if uh, if the uh, sea levels rise and your homes are affected and you know, your home is underwater, uh, no big deal. You could just uh, sell your home, uh, obviously, uh, without thinking of uh, who the hell are you going to sell it to. But that Sam Ben Shapiro is out with uh, some new takes on climate change and uh, rising sea levels. Let's hear what uh, the conservative genius, the intellectual of the right, Ben Shapiro, has to say. Scientific American has become more and more politicized these days. They openly endorsed Joe Biden for president. It was n not a complete shock, but you saw Nature do the same thing. A bunch of these quote unquote scientific <laughs> magazines suddenly have a very strong political bent. When I first saw this clip, I had to pause for a second and I had to forget that nature is a uh, outlet. And I thought Ben Shapiro was literally saying that nature, as in Mother Nature, has endorsed the Joe Biden over Trump. But continue, you know, it was, a, it, was, it was a moment. But you saw nature do the same thing. A bunch of these quote unquote scientific magazines suddenly have a very strong political bent. Who could have predicted such a thing? Okay, there's a piece in Scientific American in which the magazine announces that they are no longer going to use the term climate change. Instead, they're going to use the term climate emergency. Now, I was not aware that there's a scientific designation that amounts to emergency. There is such a thing in medicine, for example, there's like emergency medicine, right, which is the person's gonna die if you don't do something about it right now. But climate emergency, it's not as though a certain level of climate change occurring over the course of the century turns it from just change to emergency. This is a completely political designation. And by the way, I do not consider so what? a Pause quote it for emergency. A the uh, political designation, this is basically a longstanding thing scientists have, which is a bit of awkwardness over how they interface with the public over issues. That they've gotten together and decided, oh, we actually can't do what Ben would normally and reactionaries would normally like us to do, which is to stay in our little science labs and keep our opinions to ourselves. We actually have to be a bit more vocal about it because frankly, the scientific community for all of my adult life and even more than that has been probably too- uh, Disengaged. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And too hopeful that, you know, people will just see the science like that. So, yeah, exactly. And who politicized oh, science first? Who did it? it like, <laughs> it, if, if science was not, is like, you know, should not be um, political, then, you know, Republicans should just be listening to the science that's provided if they want to keep it, you know, entirely divorced and, and um, like, cold in that way. But that's not the, the, the case. That's why they have to make that, that, that argument. Right, right. And to, you know, exactly what you said, and to, to, to even strengthen that, you know, the idea that, you know, uh, they hear a scientific fact, Republicans or conservatives, and they automatically view it as political if it goes against what they already believe, because in their world, you know, they're right. So if someone is disagreeing with them, that can't be fact. That's got to be someone pushing their own political agenda for some reason or another. But then to get a... To, then to get yeah. back to Ben Shapiro's point, what is he talking about? Science has never declared things like a, an emergency or an urgent situation. We literally talk all the time. A about pandemic. Who might, yeah, pand but even like even a you know, pandemic, obviously, this past year. I mean, my entire childhood, I remember being really interested in the extinction level threats science warned about for certain different species. Like, are you kidding me? Science has never warned about urgency ozone. and emergencies. They the see, ozone, a, vo they see a volcano you. and they're just like, oh, ho-hum. The simple <laughs> truth is... erupting, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the simple truth that conservatives are too baby, too big of babies to understand is that science has political implications, right? Like, our understanding of carbon has implications for, like, the political way we've decided to transport, for instance, people around this country and keep the lights on. It's just... It just the fact that it's not humans making it political. political exactly like politics is, poli it, to, to want things not to be political is to be anti-democratic it's to be a child right let's continue that clip of climate change occurring over the course of the century turns it from just change to emergency this is a completely political designation and by the way i do not consider it a quote-unquote emergency if the yeah, climate we know. were warm four degrees celsius over the course of the next century I consider that a gradual change that human beings are going to have to adapt to with increased technological know-how, as well as innovation, which human beings have been doing for literally all of the history of humankind. Adaptation, we're really good at it. All Wiping of it? out all of the Wait. people in the global south. He gets We've so been butt doing... hurt 
about semantics. We've, Go on. We've been doing technological innovation for all of humankind. Like most of the innovation comes from like the past like thousand years. Like I, there was quite a lot of innovation that was not sticking for eons and eons. So like this idea that humanity just naturally dominates technologically, like no. And that's that's a religiously fundamentalist like um faith that's a faith-based uh, argument that well the race is all of the accomplishments of his of his uh favored white race so i don't know why he's erasing white people it's a joke also also <laughs> it'll be fun to see uh who invents these technological accomplishments and how much they they make off of them you know uh when elon musk gets a little uh uh you know makes his uh finds his technological accomplishment to live in this world changed by the climate emergency uh he gonna open up those doors and just let everyone or are they gonna have to afford it they have to, to to pitch in a little to elon musk you know the idea you know ever see that ever see that movie elysium guys like that's the world no. ben shapiro wants yeah I mean, Elon's so not going to make it either. He's going to get a bunch of government contracts to make it and not actually deliver on the promise of it. <laughs> right, right. Let's let's keep hearing from Ben though. Well, know how, as well as innovation, which human beings have been doing for literally all of the history of humankind. Adaptation, we're really good at it. Mitigation, not so much. In any case, Scientific American now says that it is a scientific duty. We literally for them to solved call the whole crisis, which is just a lie. It's just a way for them to create a certain level of alarmism that is unjustifiable by the facts on the ground. The, the fact is the economies around so the world many are going such a rapid clip that the, the amount rapid of damage clip. to be done Speaking to humankind up. on the basis of climate change is a small percentage of global GDP on an economic level. And in terms of actual human damage, we should be focused on how to mitigate that human damage. But we are not talking, as so many people have suggested, about billions of people dying or hundreds of millions of people dying or anything like that. We're not even talking oh, about tens of millions of people dying. Millions. We're not talking about probably millions of people dying nope. through through climate change directly. We are talking wow, about that that sound exactly like what Ben Shapiro said at the beginning of the fucking pandemic, if I'm not mistaken. It won't uh, even yeah. be thousands. Um, we are talking about millions of people dying. He just isn't doing that research or putting that to the forefront. That is a actual conversation about millions of people dying due to increased natural disasters and displacement and disease. That is an actual fact of what like scientists are talking about. So, you know, who's politicizing science now? I also love how all he thinks about are humans as if we don't share this this earth with thousands and thousands of other species who won't be able to survive like do you want to live in a world without frogs and polar bears and bees i mean if you, you that's if you don't care about those things i mean i guess it doesn't matter to you but maybe some people find the beauty in the world that they live in and would like to preserve that well that's the, that's for pussies frogs so. <laughs> right. well that's because they turned all the frogs gay remember <laughs> yeah well then the frogs wouldn't be interested in that anyway Sorry, gross. Regret it. Okay, Regret it. Right. Regret it. <laughs> uh, oh, this one reminds me. I, I posted a clip on my channel, youtubecom slash Binder. Let late last week, Ben Shapiro ended one of his shows, one of his live streams on uh, Daily Wire. I don't know if you guys have seen this, but he forgot to turn off, or his producers forgot to turn off the stream. So the stream ended, and he kept talking to them. And in the clip. He says, he apparently earlier in the show, he brought up, he says, pansexuals are weird. And for some reason, this stuck with him. And at the end of the show, he thinks he's off air and he turns to his producers and he requests that they cut that line out when yes. they upload it to the show. And then they, they're like saying, it was, a, it was a funny bit, Ben. Why do you want to do that? And he goes, you know, I don't want to get boycotted over it. Just amazing like i you know it's not good uh, it, how do you read that video. yeah 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 right. it's, it's not like an earth shattering reveal but the idea that like mr cancel culture warrior who stands up for his right to to free speech is secretly telling his uh his producers and his team to cut out things which may cause him problems is pretty interesting to me i mean Maybe we should go back and recheck all of Ben Shapiro's shows and see what he's requesting be cut out after he, you know, without the filter on, what is he, what is he saying once it's, uh, you know, is it that different from when the, uh, the producers edit the show? Also, he's worried about pansexuals? Like, I, that's what I don't believe. Yeah, I think those are, I think it might be a red herring. 
I think he planted it. Yeah. Or he, he wanted to get out. Like I don't under, I think it's like he's setting like a predicate for him. I'm to so afraid him. of cancel culture that I'm afraid. Actually, if you check out on me. if you look at in April and this date, I actually a video was leaked that actually showed me actually being pretty concerned about this. So the thing I said about Muslims being people we should hang, um, you can actually see I, I I'm actually not somebody like I think that's what he's doing. That's no, such I, a... I disagree. I just, I it just, it seems weird because it it's like, from? What's the he source? looks, he looks right at the camera it, it, it and so does, it was literally, well, he, he looks right at the camera and then that's when it cuts because they realize it's still It streaming. looked like it was his laptop though. So maybe that's like, he's just looking at his screen. Like how yeah, did that, that, that come out? Do we know? Uh, it was just on the stream, the Daily Wire oh. stream and someone, oh. and someone who watched it recorded. Oh, you said like, that. Like yeah. recorded. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I mean, I don't think that's the case The guy, because that's such a, a lame thing to, to do that for. And I don't think it makes him look good. I think it makes him look corny. Like he's really worried about things like that. Like his whole, the, his whole thing, the rights whole thing. It's so weird. Standing up for their right to say what they want and they're not going to be beholden to anyone. I mean, there was a whole, a whole news cycle about, uh, you know, Dr. Seuss being canceled when it was really just the Dr. Seuss organization saying we don't want to publish certain books anymore. Like Ben Shapiro is literally the same thing. Why would they do that to themselves? I, I highly doubt. I, I think it's like, you know, it's nothing crazy, he said, but I do think it's an eye opening look into what these guys are really thinking about and worried about when they're when they're not on air and, pro, you know, and pounding their chest and showing off such bravado. I mean, they're just like anybody else who's worried about uh, creating some sort of problem for themselves. I don't think it's planted. It was planted, though. It's just so bizarre. Like, I don't know why he after all the things that that guy said, your uh, offhand comment about pansexuals being weird. Like it's, it's so like, what's going on in his head? You know what? You know what I think? Because there was nothing behind it. Like in that climate change video we just saw, like he has in his mind an intellectual debate where basically an intellectual conversation where he's defending his beliefs. Whereas that pansexual comment it's just that that's what I mean. I just always call him that because I, I will never forget all the headlines and like the times and everything when he was really gaining his following. And it was like the intellectual firebrand on the right, like the intellectual leader of the conservative movement. Like, give me a break. But for him, like that pansexual comment was below him. There was nothing like if he went on an entire uh, a rant explaining why he thinks pansexuals are weird perhaps he would have left it because in his mind he would have But who knows how much he's cut out before the point that's is that's what i'm that saying like to me that's be, the yeah that's the thing like that's the point practice. of this right like you know it'd be interesting to go back and see what he's uh you know combine uh, you should com compare i should say how long the uh, usual live version of bench pro show is to the version that goes out via youtube and podcast or however they cut it up and uh, see how long that one is. I, I'll guarantee you. It's very, it very before. Jimmy Dore of him to cut out stuff from his live show. Yeah, it's so it's so weird that anyone does that. Jim, when that Dore does that too, like so bizarre to me. If it's if if it's on air, it's on air. It's you, you gotta you gotta live with it. I'm sorry. <laughs>